<clears throat> Hi, everyone. I have a glass in my hand. I have a glass in my hand, and I smash it on the wall. Can anybody tell me how many pieces I'm going to have? Nobody's going to give me a number, right? I can claim I'm going to have 3,024,232 pieces. Can you prove me wrong? You might count, but I could always argue back that there are certain pieces that are not visible to your naked eye. Only I can see them. What I'm trying to get at with this is that whatever we know about things around us in this world is mere assumptions. There is absolute truth and there is absolute ignorance. And human beings with their 15% capacity of brain only have assumptions. We don't know the truth. We can only seek the truth. Hence, with 15% capacity of brain and assumptions, we don't know if we are right, if our religion is right, if what we know is true. I'll begin my talk with this very idea about assumptions. I'm going to talk about the longest and oldest standing battle in human history. It wasn't fought with sticks, stones, or even swords. In fact, it was not even fought on the battleground. It was not fought because of religious differences, racial biases, or for glory for that matter. The longest standing battle in human history is between body and soul. Body being the captor of soul. And throughout lifetime, your soul tries to free itself from the body. Body is full of desires. It has hunger. It has thirst. It has lust for worldly desires. Where a soul, on the other hand, is immortal. In other words, soul is a part of God. And the only desire that soul has is to be one with its source, one with God, closer to God. And the hindrance it has is the bodily desires. Let me just shift this on the other hand and give you an example. Remember the story of Adam and Eve. What did Adam do? Adam ate the forbidden fruit. In other words, he fulfilled his bodily desires and hence had a paradise lost. His soul moved away from God. If we keep this perspective into the purpose of our existence, no religion, no philosophy tells you why we are here. What are we doing here? We don't know. The only thing that we actually know is that we are here to survive, to make it to the next day, to make it to the next year. Apart from that, we really don't know about anything. Putting this into the perspective of the battle between body and soul, the entire battle between body and soul is entirely about survival. Survival of our society, survival of our nation, survival of our race. There is just one weapon that soul has to fight this war with the body. That weapon is your mind. The ability to think, the ability to rationalize, the ability to distinguish between what is good for your survival and what is bad for your survival. But the more you feed to the body, the ability to think diminishes. Your ideas about the world becomes distracted. Let me just talk a little about the ideas of happiness and freedom. Think for yourself, what is happiness to you? It is all about fulfillment of your desires. Big car, good job, trophy wife, all these. What is your idea about freedom? Your idea about freedom revolves entirely around clothing, about consumption of alcohol, maybe. These are petty issues. Let me just put this into perspective of Pakistan now. As a political scientist, I've been asked this question a lot of times that why is Pakistan becoming a failed state? What are the problems? Let me just clear out some myths over here. Pakistan is not collapsing because of corruption. Pakistan is not collapsing because we have bad leaders. 
Pakistan is not collapsing because of misgovernance. The reason why Pakistan is collapsing is what I have termed as philosophical decay of Pakistani society. We as a nation have stopped thinking. Our minds are so distracted that we are so bogged down into petty issues. Like Veena Malik, what is she wearing? <laughs> Shoaib Malik's wedding. We're not concerned about economic policies. We're not concerned about poverty. We're not concerned about education. But our ideas about freedom and happiness are so distracted that we're not been able to think beyond a certain threshold. Hence, we ban Shazan juice. What is needed here? There is a high need to have philosophy and ethics as the core subject in your curriculum, to open academies, to revive philosophical discourse, not only in Pakistan, but throughout the Muslim world. Because philosophy allows you to di distinguish between what is good for our survival and what is bad for our survival. We'll be able to understand ourselves, and then we'll be able to understand our role to the nature. And when we think, we produce. When we think, we innovate. When we think, we produce good leaders. And that is what is precisely needed in Pakistan. And until and unless we do not do that, we will have a paradise lost, the same way Adam lost his paradise. Thank you very much.